Monday, picking back up with the Cold War. You've done your quiz last Thursday. You're all caught up on all the things you should have done, <laughs> I hope. Um, so this continued idea of communism versus capitalism, the Soviet Union versus the United States. And this is, uh, the Cold War is a 40 year tug of war, okay? This is a great um, poster. You can get it as a poster of communism. And this guy is supposed to be, represent what a person under communism is gonna look like, <laughs> I guess. Okay, but look at the wording here. It says, communism, the complete elimination of private ownership and individual freedoms that confine everyone to a drab, mindless existence with no hope of ever gaining anything more than a daily ration or staying alive. And that's basically what was happening in these communist nations and these nations that were controlled, the satellite nations of the Soviet Union. So the communist nations and satellite nations were struggling economically. They were having trouble and their people were looking like this. They're living off of daily rations. And so life, uh, quality of life is, ha, was not so good under these regimes. Okay, so the Soviet Union, as I said, and the satellite states in Eastern Europe were the ones that were struggling. And then they looked to the West and the United States and our allies and capitalism, was doing much better. How were they struggling? Well, they were struggling because production was decreasing. They weren't making, um, producing all the things that were needed. And so that was decreasing and incomes were falling. So if production is going down, making things are going down, jobs are going down. And so incomes are going down. That means people are not making money, which leads to guys looking like this in the poster. On top of that, the standard of living was decreasing. Basically, their way of life was decreasing. Standard of living, it's, it's, it's how you want to live. And the standard of living was poor in these nations. They did not have the things that they needed. So this starts going down. They weren't living their dream per se. So as we continue on, let's look, continue looking at the failures of communism in the Soviet Union. Well, why? The Soviet Union was huge. What were they doing wrong? Uh, spending money on the wrong things. Spending money to get into space, spending money for big armies and big bombs and tanks and bang, bang, boom, booms, the arms race, and not spending money and meeting the needs of the people. So that's where their focus was on the wrong thing. The regular people were suffering while the Soviet Union was spending money on the arms race, who has more bombs and who has a bigger um, army than this competition between the Soviet Union and the United States. That's not helping to feed its people. And spending money on the military. I've got a bigger army than you've got. Look at the way my army marches. That's not feeding the population. And spending money on the space race. Great, you got to the moon. Is there food on the moon? You know, great, you're orbiting, you're doing whatever. So the, the, these types of things were not meeting the needs of the population and cost lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money. So the bottom line is, is with the failures of communism, here we go. A satellite or a nuclear weapon, it's really cool but it's no good when your people are waiting in line for food and have no foods. What's better, having this really cool tank in your front yard or having food?
refrigerator, right? Okay, so moving along, we're seeing that the Soviet Union is starting to have some struggles. Well, at the same time, the United States and capitalism, well, we're doing pretty darn good. So they're looking to the West and seeing that life is better in the West because with capitalism, the economies were growing. We were making money. We weren't unemployed. We were increasing production and people were buying our goods that we were making in our factories that we were producing. We had incomes were increasing. We were making more money. So we're, our standard of living is going to be better. We have money in our pockets, money in the bank, money to spend on our standard of living, better houses, better cars, more food, life is better. And those in these communist nations and satellite states hmm, were a little bit jealous. So this is gonna lead them to say, wait, why not us? And this is gonna lead to a surge of democratic revolutions, revolutions in these Eastern European countries, these satellite states right next to the Soviet Union, we're going to say, wait, we want better. But look at this. I want you to look at this date. 1989, we're going to get this surge where we're going to have these revolutions are going to sweep through this region. Go back in your notes. Go back. Wait, kind of like Blue's Clues. Go back, go back, go back, go back to where that graph was. That graph that you have on your notes for the arms race. And think about this date in 1989, what happens on that graph? Something to think about. Okay, so we're gonna see these revolutions and resistance movements. Basically, they start bubbling up in the 1980s, but really, in 1989 come to a head because the people in these satellite nations being controlled by the Soviet Union are pretty much saying, this is wrong. We don't want this, we want better. They begin protesting and they demand more political rights. They demand elections and free speech and free religion. They demand a democracy and in hope also having a better economy and helping them make more money and make better economic decisions as nations. So they desired to have private property and own private businesses and to buy and sell at whatever they want and to set their own prices rather than have the government tell them. So this is where we're going to stop today. We're going to continue on tomorrow and uh, with this that next section. So you should have on your study guide completed, well, you should have had at least through 10 completed for your quiz last week. Now you should have a couple more completed. But keep in mind, there are a lot of review questions on this study guide. So those should be pretty much completed. All your friends, help each other out. That's the act of kindness. Help each other with your work. See you tomorrow.